Be the rainbow! Taste the rainbow! Hey guys, what's up? Tim Arthur here, and welcome back to Let's Play! Whoa! Super Mario Sunshine! In the last episode, we cleared up the first half of Serena Beach, including the ever-dreaded stage, also known as I'm a Chuckster! In this episode, guess what? We're going back here, because since this is a secret stage, we've got some red coins to take care of. Which I know you guys are very excited to hear about! That you get to do this stage not only once, but twice! And on a time limit, too! Isn't that just great? Yay. Oh, I didn't get the little glitch to show off. Oh well. And wow, Yoshi wants coconut again. Alright, works for me. Yeah, get away from me. Stupid wind spirits. Alright, let's go ahead and hop on up. That coconut. Thank you. So hopefully everybody's doing pretty well today. Today is February the 25th, which means my dad's birthday's in three days. So I should probably, you know, try to figure out what to get him. Oh well. It's one of those people that always checks like the price tag first and foremost. So you constantly have to rip it off. So he, he's not exactly easy to shop for. Either way, hopefully everybody's doing pretty well. It'll be kind of nice to get a February, to be honest. Looking forward to March. Looking forward to Poké Tournament, am I right? Finally coming out to the Wii U in March. That's gonna be pretty kick-ass. Oh, I died. Um. 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 Guys. 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 Guys, I'm... Guys, guys, guys. Oh. Well, that didn't go as planned. Apparently, Mario Sunshine only wants me to talk about Mario Sunshine and not Pokémon Tournament. Uh, but yes, it is coming out in March. I know it's been out, but it hasn't been out for Wii U yet, which is what I was planning on getting it for. I am still working on Fire Emblem Fates, um, I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna spoil too much about it, I know it's a fairly new game, and I try not to spoil too much about it, which, that is one of the advantages to playing older games, I know a lot, some people were kinda like, how come you don't cover, like, the newer games, like, you know, the stuff that just came out, and there's really a couple reasons for that, one is, I don't have to worry about spoilers for, you know, in this case, a game that's been around for 14 years, cause this game came out in 02, so, you know. It's been a while, most people already know all the secrets of this anyway. Secondly, is because quite often, um, with some games that I want to LP, not all of them, but usually a fair amount, um, any popular LP or Chugga Conroy, or even the ones that aren't really more of an LPing style, but they just like showing games, kind of like PewDiePie, that's the big one that comes to mind. I totally did not pay attention to what he wanted. Hopefully it was a coconut, because that's what I'm going to grab. Um, I got distracted on my rant there. We'll usually be playing it anyway, and, um... I, yeah, I had this problem with Mario Galaxy 2 whenever I went to record the first episode. And as I was going to upload the first episode of it, Josh Jepson uploaded the first episode of his playthrough of Mario Galaxy 2. So usually I try to avoid doing LPs at the same time as a popular lp -er. Because some might argue that, you know, they might click on your video by accident and start watching instead, but at the same time, most people are probably watching to make sure that the little name that's under the video is the right one, or it's next in the playlist or whatever, so I usually try to avoid that. Third is sometimes I don't always have the right recording software for it. I don't have anything like a 3DS capture board, so I can't really do that. Um, DS I can do, but it's going to be emulated, so, you know, I mean... That kind of ruins it a little bit, mostly from stuff like lag, so it kind of depends on the game whether it will really affect it or not. Uh, and I have done Phoenix Wright on a collab channel, so we're still in the pro process of doing it, and we're like being really slow about it. We're only on uh, the fourth one of five, so like on the fourth uh, episode. But yeah, that's primarily the main reason why. But I am going to be getting Pokémon Fighters, so I'll be looking forward to that. I haven't seen any gameplay of it at all. I'm trying to keep myself as, um, I don't know, as hyped as I'm hoping it will be. Maybe I'll try watching some of it, but I kind of want to keep it, you know, a little bit fresh in my mind, but not any, not actually seeing anything. 
But now let's go ahead and collect the red coins before the time runs out. Good luck. Yeah, I'm gonna need it. That first one, you can just hop off the platform you started on where you press the button by just doing a side flip and getting it that way. It's a lot easier, actually, than having to do the Chuckster thing. Fortunately, you can skip at least a few of the Chucksters by just simply using the hover nozzle, but of course, as you can well expect, some of them you are gonna need. I would recommend getting thrown to... What? Did he actually throw me over the platform? Huh. I didn't think he could do that. I wasn't holding a directional right there. Oh, okay. I actually didn't know he could do that. I never had that happen before. Alright. I guess I did end up losing a life here. How about that? Not exactly in the conventional way. Two, three. You can just bounce off that guy three times as well if you prefer that. Instead of um, having to do the little side flip. But I think the side flip's easier, but I'm also used to using it a lot, so. Really? I actually thought he would grab onto that for a second. I tried to do a double jump and I started too late and I paid the price for it. Okay, now I'm not even dying to the Chucksters, now I'm just making really stupid mistakes. Which I have no reason to blame myself for. Let's try an actual proper run, shall we? Make sure you turn around and head back this way, however, because there is a tightrope right here, which I missed. Good job, Wario, you missed, you fool. Yeah, I probably should have been working with the camera a little bit more on that one to make sure I could see that I was under the tightrope. I'm just bleeding through my lives now, and it has nothing to do with the Chucksters. How about that? Okay, Mario, you need to actually turn around when I ask you to. Come on. This is going to be it. I can feel it. This is going to be the run right here. I can feel it. In theory, what I was going to say is in theory you can get this guy to throw you up to the tightrope, but <laughs> a platform like this, a little bit easier to hit than a tightrope. I actually tried to do that my first run through of this stage. I tried to hit that tightrope and I failed a lot. As you can understand, like that, you know, understandably so, I failed it a lot. Right, aim closer here. There we go. Just in case I messed up. Now, you don't want to just completely forget about the tightrope because coin number five actually is on it, so you want to make sure you get that. Go grab number six here. Get out of my way. I'm a Chuckster! Yeah, you are. Alright, let's go ahead and grab number seven. And number eight. There you go. Wow, that looks really funny. Look at Mario. If you can touch your nose to your butt, your back might be broken, Mario. And thankfully, you don't have to use the last Chuckster to make it up to that Shine Sprite, because he's easily the hardest one to get. You can simply collect your Shine. It seemed like, from every LP I've watched, which is like Chugga Conroy's, I watched a couple other ones. Chugga Conroy's is the one that sticks out the most, because that was when I started watching him. Like, that was the first LP of him that I watched, was uh, Mario Sunshine. Um... I remember seeing the tightrope and thinking, oh, it might be easier to just hit the tightrope, and so I just kept doing that over and over. I'm glad that I just decided to go with the platform, because it's very easy to do. That stage, despite, despite my efforts to show otherwise, the red coin mission is far easier than the original, because you have Flood, so you can either, you know, skip the jump, or you can just jump and then hover to something else, either one. Episode 6, Piantas in Need. What are they in need of? A bath? Just like the Chain Chomps? Well, he sort of. Pretty much, actually. Might as well go with that. Man, look at all that blood everywhere, even though it's not blood. Hey dude, what's up? Oh no, I just went away for a bit, and now look! I can't believe it, another fine mess, and it's a doozy! Some of the villagers are trapped in that burning ooze, and I just finished evacuating everyone a little while back. If you evacuated everyone, well, I guess you probably evacuated them from Delfino Plaza, but whatever. What in the world's happening? I think I might just start crying. Please don't. <laughs> I'm sorry to trouble you time after time, but please, could you find the time to help us out again? Ten villagers are trapped in the slime. You must hurry! Now, I don't know technically why there's a time limit on this. I guess maybe you could argue that they can't breathe in that goop for more than three minutes, or since it's kind of a fiery goop, it will burn them to death in three minutes. Either way, we've got three minutes to free these villagers, and not only do you free them, you're also going to have to spray them off as well, so keep that in mind. 
Keep also in mind that I believe there are two different patches of ooze that are going to have two different villagers in them. So you're going to want to get them both. Usually you can tell because it's likely just the larger patches. So it's usually pretty easy to tell, but just keep that in mind. Alright, there's four. It's not a very difficult mission, however. As you can already see, I've gotten almost half the villagers and we're not even anywhere close to a minute and 30 seconds left on the timer. So this is not an incredibly difficult one. A lot of the villagers are kind of near the front of the village too, so just kind of work from the front and then just kind of weave left and right. None of them are like hidden up on a platform or anything like that. They are all down here, so you don't have to worry about looking for them high up. It should not be that hard to find them. Alright, let's go ahead and get this guy. That's number seven. Go ahead and get number eight. Usually there might also be piantas around the area as well, kind of just looking down at the goop. You can talk to them if you want, they're not going to say anything important, but they're also a pretty good indicator if you can't see the ooze because it's not, you know, it doesn't have any height to it. Then you can just look around for the villagers and that should give you a good idea. There might actually be one back here, I don't remember. We got plenty of time to look around here. Oh yeah, well, yeah, there is one back here, but he's the only guy that's actually near the very back of this, so... And there you go. Once you've gotten all 10, the timer will stop, and all you have to do is head back to the mayor and collect your shine sprite. I'm surprised that actually counted as a water slide. Oh, come on. Let me do it. But yeah, I am still working on Fates. I haven't made much progress. I got distracted working on my Yu-Gi-Oh! file again for an old DS game that I have no business working on whatsoever. But, um, I'm up to level 10 right now. I just finished 10, actually, so I'll be heading to 11 after doing some of the extra stuff. You know, paralogs, etc., challenges. Anybody who's played Awakening knows what I'm talking about there. You're the savior of Pianta Village, we're in your debt. As a reward, please take this. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Man. I will gladly accept this shine sprite. And yes, that wasn't just a side jump, that was in fact the little tornado spin. I kind of missed the tornado spin, it was actually pretty fun. I do like the backflip though, but really, honestly, after playing all the... I believe I've played all the 3D Marios. Maybe not for this channel, but overall I've played most of them, a pretty good majority. I think the side jump probably is my favorite, to be perfectly honest. I kind of like it. There's a lot of times where it can actually save you from making a gigantic mistake. So, I'd actually probably say the side jump's my favorite. The triple jump's fun to mess around with, but the side jump's probably the most useful. It's likely the one I use the most, other than just, you know, the basic jump. Not really sure that counts, though. Episode 7, Shadow Mario Runs Wild. Now, before this episode gets started, um, the last two shines in this world, Episode 8 and The Secret is also in Episode 8 as well, so we'll be getting both of those. Um, there's going to be a cut after this episode, and the reason for that is the final battle will actually be after this last Shadow Mario mission, and you can't go back into Bianta Village because you can't reach it. So, after I do this mission, you're going to see a bit of a cut, and then I'm going to be doing the last two episodes, and then I will take the original footage that I did for the final fight and put it, put it back to the end. So, in short, what's happening is after this mission, there will be a section that I will take out and put at the end of this video, which will be the final battle. It seems more fitting to have them all right in a row, rather than having them be um, split halfway through. Either way, this is, once again, the final Shadow Mario mission, and it's it's not very difficult, to be perfectly honest with you. After replaying all these, I have to say the one in Noki Bay was probably the hardest, because it was mostly vertical, there weren't a lot of straight areas you could get them pretty easily in. For this one, um, really the only thing to note is he does trail along that fire goop. Whoa, lag much. That was the game, not my capture card either. Um, he does trail that fire behind him, but since you're constantly spraying at him, it doesn't matter. As you can see, he got taken down incredibly quickly. So, I think it's time for Seizure Nozzle. Because why not? So, um, I will see you guys for Shine 8 momentarily. Oh man, that was one heck of an intense final battle. I can't wait for you guys to see that at the end of the video. Because I just recorded it. But, of course, that will be pushed to the end of the video. And we're going to continue on our mission, starting with Episode 8, the Fluff Festival Coin Hunt. Ah, the Fluff Festival. Many Fs are given to this title. Now, thankfully, 
this is the last uh, red coin mission for this stage. And it, it's kind of one of those, it's not incredibly difficult. They just kind of, you know, have the coins everywhere type of red coin mission. But either way, we're going to start by going into this area down here. Thankfully, in this gigantic maze that they put, there's only one red coin out of eight. They could have been jerks and put like four or five down here if they really wanted to. Thankfully, that was not the case, because that would have been a massive pain if they'd done that. These mushrooms are a bit farther away than they initially looked, so make sure that you are doing the side jump to get to them. Make sure you also know how these platforms work, because if you mess up, you're going to fall down to your death, so... Hit B on that little rotating platform right there, not A. Hit B in order to uh, switch around to the other side. Just climb up to the top, you'll automatically climb up there, you don't have to hit a button. Uh, let's see if I can get a better... There we go. It's not a better way to jump at it, but it's a better camera angle for you guys, so you can actually see what's going on. Yes, that noise while walking on this thing is very annoying. I fully agree with you. But that right there is the first red coin, and thankfully, like I mentioned, it is the only one down here. So now we can actually head on to the red coins that are much easier to collect. So let's go ahead and head on back up. We'll actually get to use this little spring mushroom here. Very nice. Make sure you have a decent amount of water, by the way, because you do not want to run out here for getting the last coin. The last coin's a bit of a pain to reach. Oh, right, I completely forgot about the second coin. I got distracted with what I was saying right there. Anyway, the second red coin, whenever you enter the village, there's a tree on your right. If you head up this tree and... Whoa, that's not what I was trying to do. If you head up to this tree uh, and head over here, you can get up to one of these giant leaves and it's just kind of draping over where the bridge was. That is your second red coin. So yes, as you can expect, a couple of them are hidden up in the trees, but not too many of them, thankfully. There's nothing on that third one. And the fourth one, if you head off from... If you went across the bridge and you headed to your left, if you just did a uh, circumference lap around the path, um, you know, just going around the sides, you'd be able to find that one hiding out in the tall grass. Just gonna ignore that. Coin number four, and where I recommend making sure you grab some extra water, is inside of the hot spring. All you do is just dive straight down and get it. Like I mentioned, though, grab some water while you're here, because you're going to need it. Come on, get up there. Coin number five is behind this beehive nest. While it might seem like you have to use some kind of strategy, all you have to do is just run in. I said run in, grab it, and run out. That's all you do. Don't, don't dilly-dally, just go and get it, and then leave. Coin number six is where the fruit tree was that you have to pick up the fruit in order to get the Yoshi. Um, there's the question mark right there. It's a little bit hard to see. I'll try to get the camera to it. But yeah, there it is. So that's number six. Whoa. Camera. You, you, you okay? You had a mild panic attack there. Uh, where is coin number seven? I actually don't remember. Oh, no, never mind. I do remember what coin number seven is. I just got distracted for a moment. That's totally what it was. I got distracted. Yeah, I do remember where it is. Coin number seven, if you head off around, if you're still doing that lap around the village, you'll notice that there is this huge crate of boxes, or this huge crate of boxes, this huge stack of crates here. If you ground pound the one that is the highest up, which means you have to ground pound it a total of four times, which I'm gonna, oh no, it's only three, never mind. The red coin will appear. You can ground pound multiples of these at the same time like that, by the way. But yeah, that's where it is. Just go ahead and butt stomp the crates on that highest point until they're all gone. And then once you've done that, you will be able to get the seventh red coin. The last red coin is easily the one that's the most time-consuming to get, except for maybe the first one. The first one's the one that will likely kill you your first try. Because I know the first time I did that, I was looking down there immediately. I was like, alright, most of them are probably down here. But turns out they're not. Um, to get this last coin, you actually need to... Whoa. You actually need to head up to the top of this tree. And in order to do that, you're going to need the rocket nozzle. Thankfully, it's right here. As long as you keep doing the side jumps and hovering to follow up, you'll be able to get up here pretty easily. And if you fall down, once you've got the rocket, you'll be able to also recover pretty easily. Let's zoom out a little bit here so it's easier to see what I'm doing. Go ahead and jump on this platform. This one's pretty finicky, so you want to make sure you jump right before the rocket goes off. And that would be why, because it's very easy to not make this jump. But what we're trying to do is land on top of the tree, as you can probably already guess. Come on. Alright, let's go and skip a couple of these. Grab that. Very nice. You can't do the side jump while you're holding the rocket, by the way. All you can do is the basic jump, which is why that's all I'm doing and not just doing a side flip, because the side flip would be enough to get me there. 
There we go. Okay, I don't know what I did that was so different from all the other times, but there we go. Grab some coins, get my health back. Thanks a lot, game. And your eighth red coin is sitting on top of this platform. There we go. Now we've got one more thing to do. As you can see, the shine sprite appeared way the heck over there on a cloud. You're like, okay, well, how am I supposed to get over there? Rocket nozzle's not gonna make that. And you'd be right, the rocket nozzle is not gonna cut it here. What you're gonna need to do is actually grab one of these little fluffs. I think they show these off in Mario Party, I'm gonna say six, on Towering Treetop, the first uh, stage of the game. There's like a little fluff thing that you can ride. It's like one of the happening spaces, I wanna say. It might just be an event, but you can pick a fluff token and fly over. Make sure you're actually over the cloud, by the way. If you let go of this too soon, you are gonna just miss the cloud entirely, and then you'll die and you'll be sad. I did that the last time I played this, and I remember it because it made me sad. Either way, there we go, our beautiful shine. And while 71 might seem like the number to stop at, remember we already picked up another shine from beating- Go! So, even though you guys haven't seen it, I'm probably going to have to edit that out now, because I don't want to reveal who the final boss is. We've already picked up that shine from beating the final boss, I should say. Good job, me! You're probably going to have to put, like, a little buzzer sound effect or something. We've still got one more shine to collect, because as you can well expect, we've got one more seeker shine, which is the Fluff Festival coin hunt. Thankfully, it's not hunting for coins, it's actually much easier. And this is actually kind of a cool shine. The problem is, I've got to navigate up that tree again. I'm going to actually try to show off the glitch one more time while I'm here. I want to see if I can show it off here. Come on. I want to show it. It looks really funny to just go right through it. There we go. Look at that. Right through. That's beautiful. That was totally worth a life, by the way. <laughs> uh, I'm so stupid. So let's do the stage proper and not screw around. Still got 18 lives. I actually didn't lose as many as I thought I was going to overall on this stage. Go ahead and hop back over here. Um, easiest way to get up to that first bottom platform would be just going up here. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, that's more than enough clearance. I wouldn't even hold the button the whole time there. If you talk to the villagers, they have some really funny lines. Like, one of them will say, I climbed all the way up to the top of this tree to find some mushrooms to eat, and all I could find instead was a red coin or stuff like that. There's, there's a bunch of drug jokes one could make here. Alright, come on. There we go. I didn't think I was going to make it there, actually. Alright, let's see if we can actually do this correctly now. That would be a no. Air, fire. There we go. Apparently all I had to do is make a semi-decent joke about Avatar The Last Airbender. Right, let's hop back up on this platform. And as you'll notice, there's a little bit of a Shine Sprite logo here. So you might be thinking, oh, do I need to like rocket jump and then ground pound on it? No, you actually want to switch into first person and go back to your default nozzle and look around and try to find the sun. Once you spray at that, it will actually unveil a little Shine Sprite logo and you will get your secret shine. It's a little bit vague, but that's still kind of cool, actually, that there's, you know, like a fake Shine Sprite that acts like the sun. But either way, let's rock it into... the final shine of the main stage. Not counting the 100 coins. Alright, so now that I've taken care of that, we will be cutting to the final battle, but um, if we're going in order of what I've been recording, this is the last that I'll be saying, so um, see you guys for the final battle, hope you enjoy it, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time for um, likely the 100 coins, so enjoy watching the final battle. After defeating Shadow Mario in the last stage, which is Pianta Village, you will get this cutscene. It does not matter how many shines you have as long as he's been beaten in every single world thus far, I believe. Shadow Mario will run off to back behind the Shine Gate even further into Corona Mountain. We talked about this, I believe, in Pina Park. And you'll be teleported to Delfina Plaza 
where as you can see, there is a massive flood going on. No pun intended, as we are using flood right now. We... Uh, as soon as the broadcast system pops up, it will also give you a little bit of information about it as well. So I'm going to give it a second to pop up here, if it will. There it is. Delfino Emergency Broadcast System Alert. Delfino Plaza has... Oh my gosh, this is so slow. Has recently experienced a waterfall-like del deluge of rain. Yeah, waterfall's right. In all areas, residents are advised to... Oh, seek. That looked like a G. I was like, to geek shelter. To seek shelter on rooftops to avoid the rising floodwaters. So yes, a lot of the island residents will actually be on rooftops. It's also a bit of a hint to get to the rooftop, and then instead of having to use the rocket nozzle, which you can't reach any of that stuff, you can't reach rocket nozzle or Yoshi, you can head back here into Corona Mountain. This isn't really a level, there are blue coins in here, and there is technically one shine, but it's not a level proper like we've been seeing. Regardless, this is a pretty dangerous level, this is not one to be messing around in. Those spikes that keep popping up, those are insta-kill. The fire that I put out with Flood a second ago, insta-kill. The lava, as you can expect, insta-kill. Pretty much everything will kill you in one hit. You can sometimes get lucky with the spikes, where they might just barely hit you and you'll get enough time to get out of the way of them, but they're designed to be insta-kill, so you want to get off these platforms pretty quickly. There's a little bit of a grace period in where the spikes are actually pushing up, which I'll show it right here because I'll stand on it. Right there, that is safe, but the second they come up, you're dead. So, you want to get off them pretty quickly. Yeah, that was close. Either way, that is the first segment. It's not actually as bad as it looks, you just have to be really careful. You'll be given more water through that little sprinkler thing, and there will be a 1-up in this box as well if you want to take it, which... It's essentially a freebie, I don't know why you wouldn't. And we will be taken into a boat! That's right, I'm on a boat, and it's made of wood in lava. I don't know if it's actually supposed to be wood. It might be, like, clay? But, you know, it's still in lava. Like, clay's not going to fare any better in lava than wood would. Than wood would. That sounds wonderful. Hooray for homonyms! Either way, you're going to have to navigate this boat to the end of the area. Whoa, let's not do that. As you can expect by me playing very carefully or not very carefully, depending on how you want to look at it. If this boat touches anything, and you can't run off the boat, thankfully, you don't have to worry about that. If this boat touches anything, any of those little pillars, that thing that I almost ran into, it will wobble for about half a second, and then it will sink into the lava, which means you've got that amount of time to switch to hover nozzle, jump, and pray, pray to whatever god you believe in that you do not fall into the lava. That's what it will do. Once you've gotten here, though, it, it's pretty much smooth sailing. Just go ahead and grab the rocket nozzle, and we will be taking our battle to the skies. Not really the skies, because the final battle is... It's a very interesting final battle, I'll give it that. But let's go ahead and hop on up to the final battle. Whoa, that was close. It feels like the second half of this game went by much faster than the first half, or the first third, I should say, since I'm splitting these into 40 shines each. It feels like this one went by so fast, like, I, it feels like I just did Serena Beach, like, a couple of days ago. Which I didn't, I actually spread these out pretty well for my recording setup, because then, otherwise I'd have multiple days where I'm doing nothing. <laughs> the water's great, hey, Junior! Sure is, Papa! Come on in, Mama Peach! Um, I think not. Mario! You again? Don't you ever give up? Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation? Bowser, I'm sorry, baby. I didn't know. It was an accident. Also, I'm not really sure what they're taking a bath in. It doesn't really look like ooze or anything like that. It has it has the consistency of water. It just looks like it's green as all, so I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be. Regardless, this final battle, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's kind of a joke. It's really easy. All you have to do on this is navigate around the sides of the tub and use the rocket nozzle to launch up. Use the rocket nozzle to launch up into the air. No, 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 no. What the heck did I get hit by right there? Okay, that might have to be slow mode as well, because I'm not sure what I hit right there. What the heck did I get hit by right there? Anyway, this final-
final battle is very easy when the game doesn't decide to screw up. All you have to do is use a rocket nozzle in order to get launched high in the air on these little platforms and then do a meteor ground pound, which is just a ground pound while you're really high up, in order to break the platform. After that, you'll have to jump off the platform, which is probably the hardest part, to be perfectly honest with you. And you can just use a rocket to save yourself if you want to. I mean, you can just stand on the spot like right here, and then boom, there you go. You're back up. Ooh, that was close. That was just fireable damage, but it's not like an insta-kill or anything. And all you have to do is do this on every single platform. There's only five total. Oops, I missed. Uh, there's only five total. <laughs> what the? Where did the one-up come from? What is that doing there? Okay, come on, game. Seriously, this is cool. Really? What? What is going on with this game? I'm very confused. Okay. Oh, that's probably what I got hit by. I probably got hit by, like, one tiny part of that goop or whatever it's supposed to be. Whoa, Nelly. Regardless, this fight is very easy. I recommend just starting to do the rocket launch. Yeah. Just starting to do the rocket launch as soon as you're headed that way. I am dead. I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Alright, you know what? No. No more playing safe. This is the final battle. And you know what? I'm gonna play it like it's the final battle. We're gonna do this fast and furious. Let's do it. Time for concentration mode. Whoa! Bowser! What's going on, buddy? Whoa! Okay, seriously, stop. Bowser's got a couple of different attacks. You can already see he's got uh, the typical flamethrower. He can launch bullet bills, which I believe might actually be Bowser Jr. launching those, but either way, point still stands. They're bullet bills that home in on you, so, you know, we've already seen these a couple times in the project, so those are nothing new. Um, in addition, he can also just shake the bathtub? We're going to call it bathtub that he's in as well. Um, and Goop can fall out of it that way. Of course, it naturally does is it takes hits as well, and it will also stun Bowser, so if, uh, what the heck? So, um, you'll have a little bit of a grace period there, should that happen. What, are you doing alright? You're not looking so hot. Save myself. Look at that frame rate drop. That is beautiful. That is entirely my game, by the way. That is not the capture card. Okay, come on. You gotta let me move. That's not cool. Oh, I guess that's where the one-up came from. Alright, whatever. Let's end this. We did it. That's right. The whole thing tips over, and they all go falling down. I feel bad for Bowser. He just wanted to have a vacation with Peach. And his son, too. Junior, I've got something difficult to tell you about Princess Peach. I know, she's not really my mama. Someday, when I'm bigger... I wanna fight that Mario again. That's my boy. Well put, son. The Royal Koopalite is as strong as ever. But for now, let's just rest a while.
And there you go. Let the credits roll. That is the final battle. Obviously, the game's not over because we still have plenty more to do. And uh, this is not the uh, breaking point where I go back to Mario Baseball just yet. I'm actually going to work a little bit more until we get closer to our 80 shine count. We're at 72, so... What it's looking like, judging from the fact that, um, you know, how many stages there are, I think the 100 coin shines will be next, and then we will be breaking for, um, back for Mario Baseball. And then we'll come back to this game and finish it off. Also, can I just say, I feel so bad for Bowser. Like, all he wanted was a vacation with Peach and Bowser Jr. But he's also, like, such a good dad. Like, you could tell that his son wants to grow up to be just like him, and he actually does care about his son. And he wanted him to actually be like, you know have a normal family, like have a mo mother and a dad instead of just being a single parent not really knowing who his mom is. And also, despite what they just said, like, come on, it's, it makes so, it feels like so much more fitting to have Peach be Bowser Jr.'s mother. Like, anybody who's known my theory on this, and it's not so much a theory as what I would prefer it to be, is Bowser kidnaps Peach and has done so several times. And as we've already seen, Peach says earlier in uh, Peanut Park, she says, you're my mama, or I'm your mama, and doesn't really understand what's going on. So I kind of like the concept that Bowser kidnaps her, has his way with her, and Peach is just too stupid to know how babies are made. And so, of course, this brings about Bowser Jr. at some point or another, and so they actually are a canonical family. But of, even if the game proves it wrong, I like that more. It just seems more fitting of Peach. And besides, let's be honest, she's much more evil than Bowser is. Either way, that marks the end, and apparently Piantissimo will be the next Bowser Jr. Not really, but either way. Let's go ahead and grab Shine number 70. And with that being the case... I will see you guys next time, unless I've changed my mind, it's likely going to be the 100 coin shines. Um, likely what's happened is it's going to be sped up, um, and I'll have commentary at normal rates, just to kind of give you general advice about where coins are in stages, what stage to pick for them, because sometimes if you pick the wrong stage and certain things aren't there, it can actually screw you out of getting the 100 coins. So, um, you're, you're going to have normal commentary, but likely it's going to be sped up a little bit, because, um... It will either all be in one video, or it will be two different videos. It kind of just depends on how long the video takes once I've got it edited. So we're kind of just playing it by ear a little bit. If you'll, uh, if you'll have, you'll have to forgive me, but we'll kind of figure it out from there. It's one of those things I won't know until I'm editing it. But either way, um, that marks the end of this video. So I will see you guys next time in Super Mario Sunshine when we tackle the hundred coins of the main stages. Keep in mind that there also are a couple other hundred coin shines, so I may or may not be showing those as well. We're, like I said, once again, it's kind of a play it by ear thing. Um, we'll figure it out when we get there. Either way, since you guys have just seen the final battle, you just saw that I have 70 shines, I'm actually going back to collect the last two that are in Pianta Village. You guys already saw them, so this is the end of the video for you guys, but I still need to go and record those. So, I will be hopping back into stage 8, which you guys have already seen.